What's up guys, your boy Quickstocks is back. As always, remember to hit those thumbs to recharge my dopamine and we will get right into your Quickstock analysis of... Who's that company? It's Spotify. Ticker symbol SPOT. Trading for $182 a share as of May 28th, 2020. Equating to a $33 billion market cap or capitalization. And as we can see here, Spotify has been on a massive tear, up over 30% in the last month alone. However, it's not all high quality audio at Spotify. Some early shareholders are still down more than 5% on their year and a half old position. So what's the move? Should we press play on Spotify or rewind back to the days of LimeWire? This is your quick stock analysis. So of course, Spotify is a digital music, podcast, and video streaming service. That gives users access to not only millions of songs and podcasts, but also audiobooks, short stories, poetry, language lessons, stand-up, guided meditation, and fairy tales from artists all around the world. As of Q1 2020, Spotify had 286 million monthly active users, which represents a 31% year-over-year increase and 130 million paying subscribers, also up 31% year-over-year, cementing them as the market leader. Which means Spotify users must find value in their service if nearly half of their user base is willing to upgrade to Spotify Premium rather than utilizing their free service. Which certainly seems to be the case as 60% of Spotify's premium users actually started as freemium users and upgraded their version after finding some use from the service. Which is certainly great for Spotify considering nearly 90% of their revenue comes from their subscription service and around 10% comes from advertisements. However, I should quickly note as quarantine restrictions began, there was a shift in listening habits that certainly has been a challenge for Spotify. Without prime listening hours such as work commutes and gym time, Spotify saw a drop in both music and podcasts. However, it's not all bad news for Spotify. Spotify is actually starting to notice a change in trend that represents both new and existing users returning to the platform. As remember, the company is on the forefront of the biggest trend in audio streaming. In the first quarter of 2020, Europe accounted for 39% of Spotify subscribers, North America brought in 29%, followed by Latin America with 21% and the rest of the world accounted for the remaining 11%, which is actually a great sign as it suggests there is still a massive growth opportunity for Spotify globally. Currently, Spotify is available in 79 countries and set to expand to South Korea, Africa, and India. Considering the K-pop hysteria and that Africa and India have a combined population of over 2.6 billion people. Meaning one could certainly argue that Spotify is still in the early stages of growth, which would obviously represent massive growth for investors. However, I've seen people state that Spotify could get billions of subscribers in the future, which maybe way down the road it would be possible. However, you gotta remember there are currently less than 8 billion people in the world. Imagine Spotify having 2 billion subscribers. That's nearly 20% of the world's population. Honestly, it just seems far-fetched from this humble reporter's opinion. However, it's not all overhyped at Spotify. Remember, Spotify is a great company. And let's be real, it's clear the transition that Spotify is trying to make. As earlier this week, Spotify signed a $100 million deal with Joe Rogan, who is one of the world's largest podcast figures, strengthening Spotify's podcast strategy, which honestly, I kind of expect this to become the new norm, where companies are willing to pay absolutely insane amounts of money to be the home of large influencers. Which certainly makes sense, as every dollar Spotify makes, they have to pay 69 cents to these big record labels. From a financial standpoint, the transition to podcasts is simply much more profitable. And financially speaking, Spotify's foundation is sturdy, certainly allowing them to make moves like this without financially hurting the company. However, it would be far too easy for me to hype the fact that they signed Joe Rogan. That's it boys, they signed Joe. We're selling the Teslas and we're going all in on Spotify. 
GG Easy. Let's try to switch it up and look at it through the bull's eyes. The fact remains, it's kind of alarming that Spotify spent over 1 20th of their total liquid assets on a single creator, whom I must note still does not have exclusive rights to Joe Rogan, as he can still upload clips from his podcast to YouTube. And yes, one could certainly argue that this is a long-term move, as some of his audience will surely pick up Spotify to continue to listen to Joe Rogan's full podcast. And it certainly does say a lot that Spotify has a large enough audience that would entice Joe Rogan to switch platforms. However, the fact remains that Spotify has to toss insane amounts of money to get big names to switch over to their platform. When it's competitors like YouTube, who, don't get me wrong, have also been known to offer incentives to its creators, but for the most part are just able to offer an awesome platform and experience for its creators and audience without the insane signing bonus. So with all of this in mind, what's our move? Honestly, as always, I firmly believe that our quick stock choice, QQQ, will be a much better long-term play when compared to Spotify. However, pump the brakes. I'm actually considering starting a small position in Spotify with, say, a few thousand dollars if we see share prices dip back to the sub $160 range, which, it's important to note, this will make up less than 1% of my total portfolio. However, I certainly can't blame investors who want to skip this track, as Spotify's competitors like Google or Apple offer investors market share into a company with much more product diversity and potential hype. But for a solo play in the audio streaming market, Spotify does look clutch. Anyways, guys, that's all we've got for today. As always, the best investment you can make is to go long on quick stocks. Hit that subscribe button now at 290 subscribers and plan an early retirement. I'll catch you guys in the next one.